What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how we can model this building that has the curtain wall and the stone tied together in the design. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a design of a restaurant that I think is in Albania. So I've seen it before and I wanted to talk about how we might use SketchUp in order to create this condition where your stone wall and your glass kind of come together in the corner. And um, this is kind of interesting to me, you know, being in general contracting, I'm also thinking about how this might be built in the real world. Um, I mean, I don't think it would be anything that would be especially complicated, but probably what we would do is we would start just by um, modeling out the building here. Um, and the reason that we would do that is because the stone is going to set where your glazing goes, right? So we can't come in here and model the glazing until we model out the stone. And so probably what I would do is I would select a stone material. And in this case, um, actually for this example, the stone coarse rough seems to fit pretty good because the sizing is pretty good. Now I think I've got this building a little bit tall, so I might push pull it down a little bit. But I thought about a few different ways to do this um, initially, and I kind of settled on the simplest way. So there's a few different ways that you could do this, but what I want to do is I want to start off just at the bottom, and I just want to come in here and I just want to start tracing along the stones like this. And so when you think about it, right, all you're really going to do with a situation like this one is you're just going to come in and you're going to add the stone. And what you have to be a little bit careful of is you have to be careful that you don't move too far too fast, but I'm just kind of tracing around the stone shapes and just kind of letting it work its way up the building, right? So we're just kind of following along with these shapes. And one thing that's going to be really important when you do this is you want to make sure that you're actually drawing on the wall, right? So notice how right there, for example, this kind of like jumped up off the wall on me because I wasn't being diligent on making sure that it's showing me the little dot that shows that these are um, on face, right? So you see the little dot right here, you can kind of see that on the surface. If you don't see the dot, usually that's an indicator that what this is doing is this is coming in here and jumping off of the face like this. So, um, and this isn't really especially complicated. You don't even have to 100% follow along with the stones if you don't want to do that. Um, you can kind of like cut them off in the middle if you want to. It's not really going to be that big of a deal um, when you get to your end product. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace all the way up this building. Then we'll come back and take a look at how we might actually uh, remove the material as well as actually model out the, um, the glazing. All right, so what we've done in here, right, is we've traced this out so that we get this kind of like stone shape on this wall. And you can kind of see this when I move it back right here. So if I push pull it back, you can see that this is actually following along with the stones pretty well. Now, um, personally, I find this gets you a better result, but there is another way that you can do this, and that's to use the freehand tool. So um, let's say that we were to do the same thing, and what I want to do is I want to get the measurements pretty close on either side of the wall. So notice how here, for example, I can see that this goes about 10 foot 5. So I might use the tape measure tool to create a guide that goes 10 foot 5 inches like this. And um, in this case, this one is going to be three foot 11. So I'm just gonna draw a line over here to be three foot 11. And in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna create a guide that follows along from that three foot 11 point along that wall like this. So I can see where that is. So I can kind of keep close to that as I'm working my way up the wall um, so that this is roughly symmetrical. So what we can do in this situation is we can actually activate that freehand tool and come in here and actually, instead of doing like click and drag, you can actually just, or instead of doing the click, click, click that we were doing before, you can kind of click and drag across here um, in order to kind of like follow along with the stone. And notice how that is significantly faster and it does does kind of follow along with the wall a little bit better like this. So I can definitely work along the wall much faster using this tool. Now in a second though, we'll take a look at the, uh, the different results so you can kind of see what that does. So I'm going to finish tracing this wall and then let's take a look at how this affects your overall result. 
Okay, so the only trick with this is sometimes it doesn't split your wall off, but it's pretty easy to check for gap because you can just click in here and just look um, at the different points where the different segments come together. And we can just see if there's a gap in here. Um, and then we can just fill in the gap. So we're gonna go up a little bit more. Look at this one, this one looks okay. This one looks okay. And sometimes what you have to do is just like do a little, draw a little line over top of this and it'll just split this face off. But now we've got two faces in here. Right, And so what we want to do is first off, we want to extrude these back. And what you're going to do is you're going to extrude this back whatever the thickness of your stone might be. So in this case, right, I don't know how thick these stones are, but we might say they're maybe like four inches thick. So I'm just going to push pull this back four inches, then I'm going to push pull this back four inches as well. And so now we've got our exterior wall. And real quick, let's take a look at the difference between the stones in here. What I might do, or what I would probably do in this case, is I would come in here and I would erase out this edge, right? Because I don't really need it in here anymore um, because I just want this to be a stone wall around the outside. But notice how this one that we drew with like the click move click method, drawing just lines, these are a lot more squared off. Um, and in a lot of situations that actually looks a little bit better in my opinion, because it actually looks like the stacked stone, where if we come over here, right, it's just kind of like curved across in here. But on the other hand, this was significantly faster and easier to do. I don't think either one of those is wrong. Um, it's just two different ways that you could do that. Um, but I think either one of them is going to work. We just need that general, um, that general stone look in here. Now, what I would do to model out the framing is I was actually thinking about how you might build this in real life, right? Because what you're going to do is your stone is just a cladding and you're going to have some kind of a backup material on the back of this, right? And so what we would do in this situation is we need to assume that you're going to have some kind of a mullion that's going to run probably down diagonally back here. Um, it might look kind of weird if you had a mullion that ran um, straight down. Um, I don't know what the inside of the restaurant looks like. You could do some kind of like spandrel glass or something like that so you couldn't see through it if you wanted to. But I'm assuming in this situation that we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw a face and it's going to run basically diagonally behind this stone right here. And you might have like a thickened mullion or something to hide the stone. I don't really know what the condition on the inside looks like. Um, maybe you can see the stone from the backside of the glass. I'm not sure. You're kind of trying to get that as close as possible back here, um, but I'm not 100% sure what that condition might look like. But what I would do is I would just draw a line back so that I could make sure that this is covered, right? And then we're going to draw a line over to this corner and we're going to draw a line up. And so when we do that, what we can do is we can draw or model this face right here. And then I would probably do the same thing on this other side. So I would start with a point right here and I would draw a line back like this. And I'm just kind of drawing lines back just so I can uh, make sure that I'm clear of the stone and I've got a good point that I can inference to, but then we're just gonna do the same thing, right? We're gonna draw a line here. We're gonna draw a line here like this. And in general, you would probably just have like a stud framed wall that runs up to this, maybe some kind of like track or something on the backside. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this good for right now. And I'm just going to come in here and select both of these by doing a shift click. I'm going to right click and I'm going to reverse these faces so they're facing the proper way. But then I can right click and I can divide this into one or two segments. Um, so in this case, if I divide it into one segment, that means we'd have a 10 foot piece of glass that should be achievable in here. So we'll go ahead and just have one divide in here, but then I would just draw a line across and intersect with it like this. And so what I've done is I've split this up into four faces. And you guys have probably noticed that I use the extension Lattice Maker a lot. It's just perfect for this kind of condition um, because what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to make a lattice with kind of the glass running into the mullions here. So um, I'll link to that in the notes down below. You can download it for free from Sketchycation. But basically what it does is it gives you the ability to just come in here and activate Lattice Maker and you can just set the width and the depth of your mullions as well as the pane thickness of your glass 
glass, your lattice material, and your pane material itself. But if I click on OK, what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to create this glass object like this. And you can see how if I look at the back side right here, um, what that's doing is that's actually creating glass and you would actually be able to see the back side of the stone. So if you wanted to fill this in um, so that this actually had like a wall thickness in here, that wouldn't be especially hard. All I would do is, well, first off, I would hide this. I would double click into the group that I created here and I would probably offset these edges to whatever the thickness of my stone was. I think it was four inches, but I just selected them. I'm just gonna tap the F key, and then I'm going to offset this so that these align, right? And then it should be as simple as just drawing a line back on both of these sides. And just kind of filling my wall in. So now you've got a thickness on your wall right here. Now, if I go back outside my group and do an edit, unhide all, now I've got my glass right here. Okay, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking about these more practical videos. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna get some better SketchUp training, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course where I've got my complete in-depth training as well as our live calls where you can actually get on a call and ask me questions. I can help you out, other things like that. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.